everybody, and welcome back to another session of the uh, uh, daily portion of German. We're on the fifth section here in the introduction to uh, um, Marsilio Ficino's life. And our guest speaker is uh, Hannah. Hannah, you want to say hello? Hello there. Okay, you see on the screen uh, a couple of images here. Um, this is a Ficino here on the left with a couple of the, the major characters in Florentine, in, in the Flor Florence of the Renaissance. And a couple other pictures that are shown uh, in the selection here. Here he is with the other doctors of the church, so-called, um, in uh, in Florence, presumably. <clears throat> and then um, here is uh, Cosimo de' Medici uh, image, and then uh, the the famous um, School of Athens of Raphael. Uh, and the two central figures are, of course, uh, uh, Plato and and Aristotle and, and the detail. And these are all the different um, scholars, mathematicians, great minds that flourished during the, the great classical period in fourth and fifth century BC Athens um, that Ficino was so intrigued by. Um, and then these are the central figures, of course, with, with Plato uh, pointing with his finger up and, and Aristotle with his hands down to, for empirical knowledge versus theoretical knowledge. <laughs> um, so uh, and, and and I was just meant, I was just uh, I heard you say that there was a lot of snow up there currently where you are. Um, uh, is that, is that true right now? Yeah, there's um, the snow has been coming down now since about uh, at like six a.m. I think so. It's been a, a pretty it's a light fall, but it's been a pretty steady snowfall. Good for first uh, one of the season. <laughs> for cross country skiing or or not so much not not that substantial. Um, I'm not sure if it's substantial enough. But um, but it, it, it's nice to have um, to have an early snowfall. Yeah, great. Okay. All right. So this is the last section. We, we will continue with uh, a further um, sections on the life of Ficino, which then uh, gradually move into some of his philosophical statements and positions. But can you see the text on the screen right now? Yes. Okay. So as before, I'll read in Latin. Uh, sorry, I'll read um, uh, out loud and then. Um, uh, Hannah will repeat after me. Please re read with her to get a flow of the sentence, a sense for that. And then I'll ask her a, a specific questions to the grammar to unpack the, the structure of the sentences. And please try to uh, think in terms of, of what your answers would be so we can do this together. And we can all arrive at a, at a meaningful and, and good literary, <laughs> I mean, um, uh, um, a, uh, a very straightforward uh, literal translation. Okay. Going on in the beginning, here we go. Uh, auch medizinische und astronomische, astrologische Traktate, everybody? Auch medizinische und astronomische, astrologische Traktate, Traktate. <laughs> Gehört, gehören zu seinem Opus. Gehören <clears throat> zu seinem Opus. So, where's your verb? Uh, the verb is uh, gehören, gehören zu. Yeah, and that belongs to. Oh, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. That means they belong, right? They belong. Yes, and, they belong to. Yeah, and where's your where your subjects? Where is your subject? Um, uh, uh the treatises, so tractata. Yeah, tractata. Good. Okay, so, um, and opus is of course the general work, the entire work of a particular author. Mm -hmm. So you want to translate that first sentence? Sure. So, um. Uh, medical and astronomical, astrological treatises uh, also uh, belong to his collective work. Great. Going on. Vor allem hat er sich nicht nur an die jeweilige Fachwelt gewandt. Everybody? Vor allem hat er sich nicht nur an die jeweilige Fachwelt gewandt. Okay, let's stop there. Um, where's your verb? Uh, hat sich gewandt. Good. Uh, um, Hannah correctly picked up the reflexive pronoun, hat sich gewandt. This means, and wenden means to turn. So literally, he has turned himself um, above all for allem. And then um, uh, this is not only to the, and this is a Fachwelt, this is the, um, the, the experts or the world of the faculty uh, at that time, mm -hmm. jeweilige. So how would you just do that first uh, phrase there? Sure. So uh, above all, uh, he did not uh, only turn to uh, the experts of that time. Good. Mm -hmm. um, 
sondern immer wieder durch eigene Übersetzungen ins Italienische, Everybody. sondern immer wieder durch eigen, eigene Übersetzungen ins Italienische, für die Verbreitung des Spezialistenwissens, für die Verbreitung des Spezialistenwissens, im Florentiner Bürgertum ge gesorgt. Im Florentiner Bürgertum gesorgt. Hören wiederum ganz humanist. Hören wiederum ganz humanist. This is a little bit tricky here. Um, so he did not turn uh, to the um, to the um, um, uh, to the specialists of that time. Um, rather, again and again. So when you have wieder, which is, which is means again, and immer preceding it, you you just repeat mm -hmm. this word twice. So rather again and again, and then. Where's your verb complex there? Um, um, so, at gesorgt. Yeah, and so the tricky thing here is to see that this auxiliary hat mm -hmm. serves as the auxiliary both for gewandt, so he has turned, but it also, and it can very often in German do this as well, it also serves as the auxiliary in the next phrase for gesorgt, and he has provided. So okay. he has provided and then for, for the dissemination, breit means, means wide, and uh, for breitung means the dissemination or the passing out of, for the, mm -hmm. for the dissemination of, of the specialists, um, of the knowledge of the specialists uh, in the Florentine uh, civil, re so in the, among the citizens of, of Florence. So in other words, he also um, not only um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, was a great leader uh, in, in philosophical terms, but also provided just a lot of information, uh, which he translated into Italian, which you have in the earlier phrase. Okay, mm -hmm. um, let's see. Um, and then, so why don't you try, um, just do that whole phrase again, starting from here, for Alam, above all he... Okay, so um, so above all, he he did not only turn to the experts of the time, um, rather, um, uh, again and again, it, he um, ha has provided for the dissemination of uh, the specialized knowledge in the Florentine uh, citizenry, citizenry or of the citizens of um, Florentine citizens um, uh, through his own translations into Italian. Good. And you could even start... Um, um... Uh, through his through his translations into Italian, and ins is a contraction for in das in into mm -hmm. Italian. You can even start the phrase this way. Um, uh, rather, through his own interpretations into Italian, uh, again and again he provided for the dissemination of this knowledge uh, f uh, among the citizens of Florence. Okay, okay. and then again, um, thereby herein, right. and we have even the, an older antiquated English word herein, H-E-R-E-I-N, uh, uh, which mm -hmm. uh, you would impress your teachers if you if you put it in a pair, in, <laughs> in essay, <laughs> just sort of kidding. And, and here, again, also uh, quite a humanist. Okay, going okay. on. Um, er interessierte sich, everybody. Er interessierte sich. Fru für die platonische Literatur des lateinischen Mittelalters. Für die platonisierende Literatur des Latin, lateinischen Mittelalters. Okay, so where's your verb? Uh, interessierte sich. Good. So, uh, so uh, he, he interested himself. Good. Or he was interested in, yeah. Good. Um, um, and uh, subject is obviously er. He interested himself mm -hmm. or was interested. And then how do you construe fru? It's an adverb. Uh, uh, early, early on? Mm -hmm. Early on in his life, then, is, is the in idea. In his life, okay. For the, um, and here's a, a present participle serving as an adjective for the Platonizing literature, i.e. the literature that's becoming more and more uh, influenced by the Platonic canon of the, of the Latin Middle Ages. Okay, uh, just do that, that, do that sentence again. He, in, he... Sure, so... Um... He, he was interested early on in his life in the uh, Platonizing literature of the Latin Middle Ages. Perfect. Nachdem er Zeitlang, sorry, nachdem er eine Zeitlang 
mit dem Epikurismus des Lucrets symbolisiert hatte. Nachdem er eine Zeit lang mit dem Epikurismus des Lucrets sympathisiert hatte. I think he did that better than I did. That's, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> After, so, um, so where's your verb complex there? With starting with not. Uh, uh, sympathisiert hatte. Yeah, notice in in so. in um, dependent clauses, the verb always mm -hmm. comes at the end, and it's all, and the, also the auxiliary is reversed with the main verb, as you have here. Hatte comes at the end. After he had sympathized, and eine Zeit lang is is really. Um, really an accusative in the accusative of extent of time which you have in Latin and Greek for for a long time with the uh, Epicurean, Epicureanism of Lucretius. Um, okay, so you would just want to do that. Um, why don't you do the whole thing from air down to the... Down okay. To the... All right, so uh, he was interested early on in his life in the Platonizing literature of the Latin Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. um, after he had sympathized a, a long time with the Epicureanism of Lucretius. Perfect. Er beschäftigte, es beschäftigte ihn im Briefwechsel mit Freunden. Everybody? Es beschäftigte ihn im Briefwechsel Wechsel mit Freunden. Schon damals die Frage nach dem höchsten Gut Gut und dem Seelenfrieden. Um, schon damals die Frage nach dem höchsten Gut und dem Seelenfrieden. Okay, um, let's see. Um, so in this sentence, um, sometimes in German you have an S which is actually holding this place for a subject. It, it's actually the subject, but, it, but there's also an, another item in the sentence which is the real subject. So um, where's your verb, first of all? Uh, the verb is beschäftigte. Yeah, so it occupied. So we were looking for the subject to. So this is the. First of all, this is holding the place of the subject, but where's the real subject? Uh, die Frage. Good, yeah. So at that time, the question. And then you might want to pick this up as sort of. Because this sort of describes what the question is. Nachdem Hoekstein. How would you translate this this part here? Um. Um. The, the question no, uh, about the oh sorry the question of about the the, um, the highest good um, and um, the, the the peace of the soul exactly yeah mm -hmm. okay. so um, this whole thing this whole question about this uh, occupied him or um, and then uh, here you have how would you translate this in brief facts of mit Freunden um, in in his uh, in his in letters with 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 friends. In his in his letter in his exchange. Letters. Okay, letter exchange. Okay, with friends. With friends, yeah. Um, already at that time, so you have various elements. You you could really, uh, in the order of the terms that you use or the phrases that you put one after another, really varies depending up you know. Um, but uh, um, in other words, you could start with, uh, in the in the in the letter exchange with friends, or you could mm -hmm. start with this. Already then, the mm -hmm. question da, 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 in the lane, in the letter exchange with friends occupied him. You know, you could do it that mm -hmm. way. So how would you do that last sentence as, as Beshefti? How would you like to do it? Okay, um, I'm thinking I, I'll start with uh, like already then or already at that time. Great, yeah. Okay, um, so let's try this out. So um, already at that time, the, the question about the, the highest good and the peace of the soul uh, occupied him in his letter exchange with friends. That's perfect. That's, that's fantastic. Isn't, isn't that fun once those yeah. things get uh, sort of resolved? I mean, I'm mm -hmm. hoping you all who are listening um, find that also um, intriguing how, how some of these um, sections of the sentence can be worked around. And it really, as I was mentioning um, with, with you earlier, um, how um, German since it's uh, as an inflected language resembles Latin and Greek uh, very much, much more than the sort of linear uh, uh, languages like, like French and English, the modern languages, mm -hmm. other than German, don't have that um, characteristic so much that you can move around parts of the sentence so much for, for simple or, or for uh, 
kind of um, uh, for, for, for uh, sub, not sublime, but but for subtle emphases and stylistic uh, difference. It's really quite interesting the way that you do that. As you've seen right now, so you could shades of meaning can be brought out and and made more prominent in the way that you decide you know which phrase to um, uh, translate first. Okay. So anyway, that was a, a fun adventure into the life of Ficino. And, and would you like to hear more of this, um, Hannah and everyone else? Yeah, definitely. So we'll continue this uh, next time uh, in the next week or two. And so look out for uh, another portion titled with Ficino. So Hannah, thanks so much for joining us. And I hope to, hope you enjoy the snow that, that's falling right now. And uh, anything you want to say uh, to everyone um, um, as we go? Yeah. Uh, well done, everyone. Thanks so much for, for joining us. It was um, it was a real treat translating this with everyone. Okay, great. So thanks so much and hope uh, all the best to you and, and um, see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.